Hey, I'm Vamsi, and you're watching Player's Narrative. From Software made some of my favourite games of all time, and that's why I ask this question with a heavy heart. Is From Software becoming outdated? Dark Souls and other Souls games from From Software have most of the same core pillars. They're brutally difficult with exhilarating combat, have unforgiving death mechanics, and are designed with a twisty, maze-like levels that are filled with traps. Oh, and they also tell their story through cryptic item descriptions and NPCs who speak like Shakespeare. It started with Demon Souls, which was an experimental game that ended up becoming a cult classic and even got a remake for the PS5. What made that game great was vastly different from the RPGs that were being made at the time. Your health drops to half if you die and are in soul form. You drop all of your souls and other experience points whenever you die. And you have to retrieve them to keep your experience or lose them forever. World Tendency decides how hard the enemies are based on your actions. Boss fights were really different and unique from one another. One of the bosses even drains your soul level that was literally unheard of in any game at the time. These were fresh ideas that were risky to implement in a market that was filled with games that were hardly challenging. Dark Souls took that formula and made it mainstream, and now we have seven From Software Souls games and a bunch of clones from other developers, like Neo, The Surge, Blasphemous, and much more. It felt great when we first played Demon's Souls with the world tendency and spoke-like levels where you can explore five different worlds at your will. And then Dark Souls took it up a notch by having a giant, windy, interconnected map that loops back on itself and even introduced the Estus Flask system. But a lot of the latter games started to feel the same. There's only so many times you can explore a level, unlock a shortcut and dodge roll to beat a boss before it gets repetitive. Sekiro was a good diversion, but it still rigidly follows the formula for the most part. Of course, the death blow system and the resurrection mechanic made it fresh, but at some point there needs to be something more bold and radical to the genre itself. Most developers make their games based on their previous experience and push themselves to make new games, unless you're an indie developer who can make whatever they choose. Naughty Dog is a good example of this. They're used to making cinematic action blockbuster games like Uncharted, and then they use their knowledge from those games to tweak and create new gameplay mechanics for The Last of Us, which also shifted in tone for a more grounded, realistic survival story as well as gameplay. And it's one of the most influential games in the last decade. Then again, there have been developers who switched genres completely and made new games every time. Platinum Games, led by Hideka Kamiya, made a diverse set of games every time, each of which is drastically different from one another in many ways. There's the action beat-em-up Bayonetta, the slick, time-slowing third-person shooter Vanquish, and then the isometric superhero action game The Wonderful 101, where you draw your weapons on a trackpad for combat. Guerrilla Games, who used to make linear first-person shooters like Killzone, switched gears to an open-world RPG like Horizon Zero Dawn. This forced them to rethink their design principles and creative thinking in a new perspective. Nintendo, who mostly only have a few IPs like Mario and Zelda, make their games wildly different from one another. Take the Mario games for example. There's the 2D Mario games, then Paper Mario, Mario Kart which is a racing game, Super Mario Odyssey which is about Mario platforming with a cap that lets you play as anyone you capture and many others. Even From Software made different games back in the PS2 and GameCube era. Eternal Ring was a first-person action RPG which feels more like a traditional Bethesda RPG game from back in the day. There's the Armored Core series which is a third-person mech shooter where you fight other pilots like a Titanfall game. It's practically unrecognisable that it's a FromSoft game that you know of. Elden Ring, their upcoming RPG, is Dark Souls but open world with a map and more freedom in how you approach the world. Which is great, but it's a safe bet than a risky gamble. Look, I'm not a game developer or a highly revered critic, but this jaded problem can be solved in one of two ways. One is by putting play first, meaning gameplay takes priority over other design tenets like graphics or voice acting. Most AAA games these days are way too concerned with having a story and then focusing on the mechanics that suit the game instead of vice versa. This way they can start fresh with new mechanics a la moment-to-moment -moment gameplay 
that the company hasn't done before which can lead to a game designing itself. That's what Nintendo does and the last time I checked they're still in business. Unless Microsoft decides to buy them out. The second way is to bring radically new ideas to a franchise and make the sequels different from one another. Let's take Far Cry 2 and 3 for example. Both of those games are from the same franchise but feel very different when you play them. Far Cry 2 feels like a safari gone wrong where you're forced to survive in the wilderness and your weapons feel clunky and randomly jammed during firefights. You have to fix your car in the middle of nowhere or catch a bus to fast travel. You can't tag enemies and see through walls. It really puts you at a disadvantage giving you the sensation of being abandoned in the middle of Africa. Far Cry 3 on the other hand feels like an action blockbuster game where you can tag enemies and take them down with an arsenal of weapons has tons of action set pieces and chase sequences like a Rambo movie. That's entirely different from what came before, but it's great in a different way. Those were just my two cents, but I could be wrong, I don't know. As a huge fan of From Software and their great games, I just want them to push themselves in new directions to make more influential games like back in 2011. So back to the question of From Software being outdated. I still think that they're iterating on the successful formula that has worked for them in the past. But it is nice to see them go open world and bring some new ideas to their established genre. I just wish that they take more gambles instead of making a sequel that works. Hey, thanks for watching. Subscribe and hit that bell icon if you want to support my channel and like the video if you did. Let me know what your favourite FromSoft game is in the comment section below. Or don't because I can't tell you what to do unless you like being told what to do. Okay, I'm going to end this video before it gets weird. Ciao.